and retailers expand their business and reach new consumers and raise new revenues. Keeping up with the speed of innovation while creating a memorable experience for customers, as you all know, is a challenge. Part of it because consumer channels are shifting so quickly. Adapting, evolving, subscription snack boxes are rising in popularity, as are intelligent vending machines, online grocery platforms, which 50% of global consumers tell us they want to use very much in the near future. Similarly, online shopping projected to grow at six times the rate of offline grocery shopping. And fresh format grocery stores are expected to grow at 25 times the rate of traditional supermarkets in the US alone. The outside world can push you into day two if you won't or can't embrace powerful trends quickly. If you fight them, you're probably fighting the future. Not probably, you are fighting the future. Embrace them and you'll have a tailwind. In order to stay relevant, grocery retailers must continuously evolve, seek new innovation and offerings. So what does the future look like? Automated solutions, robotics, intelligent technology are increasingly becoming a reality, and more retailers are experimenting with this type of technology, both inside and outside stores. There's Okado. Overseas, the British online grocer Okado has shown off an automated warehouse in Andover, Hampshire where robotic hands pick fruit and vegetables without damaging them and fulfill orders for customers. They're currently brought over to a human team for selection, but in future, the hand could replace and probably will replace that human team as well. Okado is also developing is an autonomous humanoid robot for industrial maintenance called Second Hands, which will one day serve as an assistant to human workers. No doubt, it's only a matter of time before advanced AI robotics permeate all industries Again, in obvious statements, but including grocers. Yadia, China's largest online grocer, set up a thousand virtual stores in various parks, college campuses, and office spaces. Similar in layout to a physical store, they're visible to anyone who's connected to the retailer's app through their smartphones. Users can literally find an entire store completely stocked with virtual food items which can be scanned with a smartphone and put into a virtual grocery basket for delivery at a later time. Face pay. We've been hearing a lot, I hope you've been hearing a lot about this, but face pay is a technology that debuted in 100% in genuine imported food stores in Shanghai at the end of 2014, beginning of 2015. It allows customers to pay for their goods simply by standing in front of a machine that scans their face Hands. It's taking face recognition to a different level. Very, very cool. KFC. I'm not sure you would have KFC, but KFC in China, part of Young Brands, um, has created, before they spun out, has created a smart restaurant that employs facial recognition technology to make many suggestions based on customer expressions. It also invites customers to play augmented reality games with the chance to win discounts from KFC's menu. Think about these examples from China. Why not Canada? China, Alibaba has become the world's number one retailer. WeChat has 1.1 billion registered users, 800 million of whom actively use it. As I said yesterday, if you haven't had a chance to take a look at WeChat, there's a six minute video. Clearly, I didn't have time today, didn't have time yesterday. But if you get a chance, take a look at it. Everything on that one platform, it will take over retail in the world. And if you don't know the ins and outs of it, you better need to understand it. And it's incredible. Singles Day, so November 11th, our Remembrance Day. In China, the only thing they need to remember is one, either they're single, and two, they gotta buy something. $17.8 billion through the Taobao and Tmall of Alibaba. In one day, $17.8 billion. It's, it's staggering. So, let me, let me finish with, with this. I mean, I, I closed yesterday um, with some themes, and, and there were a lot of you here today, so I'm gonna try not to the same thing, but for those who weren't. We did a study um, uh, where we asked uh, CEOs globally, and I pulled out the Canadian number, and the Canadian number, we asked them, what do you, what do you think the, will look like in the next two, three years? And CEOs believe that in the next two, three years, 
the world and Canada will be transformed more than the last 50. We then said, where are you going to be as a company? Same 75%. I'm not sure if it's the same, but clearly it's a huge overlap. Same 75% said, we're going to be the same company. What kind of a disconnect is that if you, as a CEO, believe the world is turning upside down and I don't have to change? I was telling the crowd yesterday, I speak a lot globally and I wear Canada on my sleeve, inordinately proud of the country, inordinately proud, clearly of retail. Uh, but the analogous situation is when I speak, we're, we're a country that is reticent to move outside of Canada. We only have 35 million people. That's it. And, and if we're try hard, really hard, 100 years, we'll have 40 million people. So the world is a global marketplace now. Retailers, different for food, right? But retailers now are competing with everybody globally. Canada needs to get on board. Everything I talk to you here about, you know, the innovations and what's happening globally, there has to be a wake-up call for this country, I believe, and for, for uh, an industry that I love. And we can't have just the rest of the world having these innovations. We've got some of the greatest retail here, some of the greatest grocery here that have been leaders globally. And my message yesterday, my message to you today, is please, act now. I asked the CFO, our CEO a year ago, significant company, and, you know, why are you not online? And he said that, and this is 2016, not 2006, and his answer was that he was afraid his online sales would cannibalize his bricks and mortar sales. I, I had no idea what to say to him. A year later, he's beyond sorry that he didn't start earlier, and he's just trying to catch up now, and that's gonna be hugely hard. The CEOs in the room, don't be that guy. So, we're in a great industry, but let's, let's act now. Let's learn the lessons, and I hope some of which I shared with you today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Willie. Very much appreciated. All right, well, we've made it to the end of store 2017. I